My name is John Davies with Green Biz, and I'm here with Bill McDonough. Bill, welcome. Thank you. So, Bill, you're here at Verge, which is uh, sort of our phrase for describing the convergence of energy and built environment, transportation, information. So, how do you see design's role in all of that? Well, I think all the things you just described could be seen as tools. And then the question of the value of a tool is how it's used and what intention uh, that we find it's uh, been put to. So the real question is, what do we do with all these things? Design is the first signal of intention. So what do we do about the city as part of an organism on the planet? How does it affect the larger condition as well as the, the small focus condition? And that's really a design question. And you know, you do everything from, and I'll start with that, cities from scratch. So I know you've been involved in efforts in China. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, well, the Chinese, you know, obviously with so many cities over a million people, um, we've had to help on a few fronts where we'd come in over existing plans that they were concerned about, where the designers of the city had actually not seen the territory. I'm, it's been absolutely amazing to me that we'll come in and see a city plan that's a grid that takes out mountains as, as if they didn't exist, or covers over all the rivers as if they don't exist. It's truly amazing, uh, for, uh, one sort of crazy end of the spectrum. Um, but on the other, there's a lot of concern about what the livability of the cities will be, you know, if they're in a uniform development protocol or, they, or they're sucking water out of the ground beyond the ability of the water to be manifested. And now they're talking about doubling the size of Beijing, for example. In, in a number of years, even five years, to go from 20 to 40 million people. Wow. And they're already out of water. They already had to shut down power plants. And how is this going to happen? It's just going to happen. And so the question becomes, what do we do about that? How do we think about it? So it's really been quite dynamic. So how do you approach finding solutions for that? Well, I think that there are two approach to these things. One is the traditional one of trying to be more efficient, but that's obviously insufficient. So we, we don't just say reduce your carbon emission or something. We say the things that are going down to the right, we should actually, the things we don't want, should be below the line. Because your goal is zero, which is nothing. So really they should be below the line and you should be moving toward the zero of carbon or whatever, fine, but they belong in the negative category. And then we should articulate the positive agenda and then set our goals as 100% good and then start to reinvigorate the whole dynamic of of reducing bad, increasing good, rather than just decreasing bad. So when you look at the cities, for example, we can look at the old cities and say, the new city can mine the old city. So we can, if you want to build a new apartment building for 400 people, go into the old city, find 400 per capita worth of uses, cut that in half, it gives you the license to build the new. And if we increase that by 50%, which we can do, then the new city mines the old city's inefficiency, creates the new city highly efficient, and the entire city ends up reducing its energy consumption or water consumption by 25%. So you double in size and yet then and, and reduce the demand as well as increase the supply of renewables and so on. So you really have to do it all, all together. It's, it's a very rich opportunity that has to be looked at in a multi-dimensional way. Oh, that's, that's great. So you live in a very historic house. I, I recall. So how do you integrate sort of history into these new cities? And, you know, it's like Beijing you were talking about, so it has a history and yet you're going to remake it in a much different way, at least from a efficiency and, and self-generating energy and all that. So, so how do you look at that from a design perspective, you know, well, integrating that history? I used, I used to live in a house designed by Jefferson, and I think one of the important things about the lawn at the University of Virginia, which is where I was living, um, is that he, he, he took the library, and that was really platonic form and truth and beauty, and then on the ranks on either side of the lawn are, are Aristotelian soldiers, in effect. So this is math and science. So I think it's really critical that we merge the issues of truth, beauty, and culture with the math and science and so on, and that it becomes this very rich melange. And it's not like anybody does these things. I just comment on what we're seeing and help. help. But these are fierce commotions um, that are going on. I think the most important thing that I'm trying to focus on is how do they all become one organism 
within themselves, and that's what we just heard, for example, here at Verge about Las Vegas with Zappos. They're trying to create an organism, really. If you look at what they're doing with these accidental meetings and you know developing community, what that is is a fierce commotion. It is an organism that is like life, made of complex interactions that are going on and in an astonishing uh, ways that are, many of which are serendipitous, and so you have luck involved. And so I think you have to open yourself to all that kind of creativity and create the most creative space you can because the, to be a living thing, as Crick pointed out nine years after discovering DNA, you have to have growth and you have to have free energy from outside the system, which in living things is from the sun. We can do that too. Right. But you also have to have an open metabolism of chemicals operating for the benefit of the organisms and their reproduction. So it's really about this fierce commotion of integration of energy, material, and human creativity all at once. But the city should be seen as part of the same organism as the countryside. So I think ultimately that's the part for me that is most exciting, is that we can see that we get rid of things like sewage treatment plants. We, we eliminate that language. We, we now say nutrient management system. So we want the phosphate back. We want the nitrogen back. We want it to go to the farmers, not pollute the rivers and then come back on our food. Otherwise, we're going to have to go to Morocco for our phosphate, which is silly. See? So the cities and the country is one organism. I, I think it's really an important part of the mix. So you sound optimistic. Uh, do you see the future as a bright cradle-to-cradle -cradle environment where we're constantly feeding back into the system? Well, I can't really help it because uh, designers have to be inherently optimistic because we're trying to imagine a better future. That's our job. So there's that. But people used to make jokes about me that that you know people who are pessimistic see glasses half empty and optimists think half full. See, I see glasses as full all the time. They're just full of water and air. But they're both essential. You know, right. so still a science here. You know, they're full always. And yet, from a Zen perspective, the value of a vessel is its emptiness. So you also have that. And when you put it all together. My issue is I just don't think the glass is big enough. So that's optimistic because right now everybody, all they see are the limits that we're bumping into, but it's because the systems are not designed to be able to share. So we end up with everybody being afraid of limits or bemoaning even our population. It's just such a sad thing for the children to feel like they're part of a population problem. That's terrible. We just celebrate their creativity. So I look at a world of endless resourcefulness of energy, of materials, and of human creativity. So growth is good because it, it is powered by the sun. And it's a form of negative entropy. So why wouldn't I like that? That's great. Thanks a lot, Paul.